Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Center. Today I'm going to talk about Fusion Cache. Fusion Cache is a NuGet package which provides a facade on top of other distributed cache as well as it has quite a bit of advanced feature which can be really useful. It supports distributed cache it supports connecting to a database or a service or anything through factory. It also supports backplane mechanism. For today's video, I'm going to cover the basics on how to use Fusion Cache. And then in my next video, I'm going to talk about some of the advanced features. Now, one of the things that we usually have issues with caching, more than issues is some sort of inconvenience that every time we have to use a cache, we have to always check if the cache exists. If not, then add and manage the cache that way. Fusion cache kind of helps with not doing multiple checks and it provides one method which does both, which I found to be very handy. Now here what I'm doing is I have a method called population provider, which is going out to this open API, which we can call to get the population by country. And then I have this model, which is based on the JSON data, which is returned by this API. So here, all I'm doing is I'm calling the HTTP endpoint, reading the response and just deserializing and returning the data. And then in the program, what I have done is, First of all, I created this HTTP client so that I can access this HTTP client factory here. And I'm using .NET 8, so that's why you can see that my constructor injection is a little bit different. I'm using the class mechanism of constructor, which is provided by .NET 8, which is called the default constructor. And uh, in the program, and here what I'm doing is I'm adding the Fusion Cache to the dependency injection container using this extension method add Fusion Cache. And then I'm just using try with auto setup. With try with auto setup, basically we do not have to do any sort of extra configuration. It kind of does everything out of box. If we want to do our own setup, then we can try with options where we can provide multiple options, which I'm going to discuss in my next video. And then what I'm doing is I have this get endpoint, which is a population where I'm taking the population provider as a constructor injection. And then I am using the iFusion cache, which is an interface provided by the Fusion cache. And in the code, all I'm doing is I'm doing a cache.get.set async, and I'm passing a key called population, and then I'm passing a function, which is a func. And here, what I'm doing is I'm just calling the population provider.get population, which is returning the data. This is essentially the factory that I was talking about, is that I can use any factory to get me data where this data is coming from an HTTP endpoint. And after that, I'm saying, cache this data for five seconds. Now we can increase this or decrease based on our requirement, but I'm caching it for five seconds. And then I'm just returning the response back as a part of this output. And what I've done here is I have put it a big point here so that we can see the call in action, how many times the call is getting back. Ideally, we should get the call only one time in every five seconds. Now you see here in a traditional caching framework, we usually have to do a cache.get and then if it is null, then set it and manage the cache that way. Here, we just have one call. So this is something I find to be very handy and useful, using just one call for doing 
both the work. Now passing the caching time, it's usually provided by every framework when you do set. The other important feature or the other support that Fusion Cache has, which I mentioned is distributed cache, which means right now it is in memory because I have not passed any configuration to set up a distributed cache, but I can easily do that and I'm going to show it in my next video where we can use a distributed cache, in which case the cache that we are going to add is going to go into the distributed cache and it will be managed through that. So here, now let me run this application and show you that the population provider is going to be called only first time and beyond that it will be cached. It is obvious this is how it is supposed to work, but still I thought it's better to show it in action. So now here, if I come, I say try out, I execute, you can see it is going to go into the population provider where I'm going to make this HTTP call, get the response, deserialize, and return the data. And then here in the UI, we can see the data. Now, if I execute again, you see after five seconds, it's getting called back. Now, let me show it in action a few more times because this was quite fast. So you see that now I click thrice, it did not come back until the fourth time. Now let me increase this duration a little bit. Run it again. And now let's try it out. It comes here first time. And then for 15 seconds, it's not going to come in. So this is And after 50 seconds now, it is in again, trying to get the data back from the server. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video and introduction to Fusion Cache. As I said, Fusion Cache is extremely powerful. I am just showing the basic feature of using Fusion Cache as a wrapper for getting and setting cache instead of using the iMemory cache, which comes from Microsoft caching framework. And as I said, the biggest advantage of using this is get and set is part of the same method. But there are a lot of other features that is worth exploring and spending time with. And I'm going to talk about a few of them in my upcoming videos. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel and you think you're going to get value out of this channel, please subscribe to the channel.